share the name of the stream yet, but let's uh, listen. So what, what the purpose here is to check out some different brass libraries. We've got Junkie XL, we've got Forzo, we've got Arc, the first Arc. I've got all of them, but I just chose the first one. Angry Brass Pro and Caspian from Performance Samples, Hollywood, East West Hollywood uh, Brass. And then Trailer Brass with the Horde, uh, Native Instruments, uh, kind of symphony series, Brass. We've got Century from ATO, Talos. I only have the low Talos, so I don't have the horns from Audio Imperia. You've got BBC, the free version, just for maybe even Devil's Advocate. And um, let's see. It says the... The current stream's bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. How do I change that? It... The place to change that. So what we've done is we have created a simple little group of notes sounds something like this. And that is the arc version. And you'll hear that there was a little marcato and then some sustain that um, that sustained after the marcato kind of left. So that was arc one with trumpets and horns and I think trombones. I'm not even sure if there were tubas in it, but the point is that they were they were layered both sustains and marcato, and the marcato was the the initial part of the attack and then kind of died away. And the sustains were what was left. So I was doubling each instrument for both of those articulations. Here's what that same or a similar line sounds with, like with um, just Talos low. So again, this is not the um, both Talos horns and, um, and low brass, but just the low Talos. <laughs> In fact, I think you can see some of the notes that weren't playing here. So the way that you write the line makes a difference, and a lot of people will tell you not to write this interval in low brass and definitely not write this interval in low brass. So one of the things that I was experimenting with was which sample library packs are, packages are more forgiving for dissonant intervals, especially in the second part. This is, um, you know, maybe okay. We've got a big different distance between this, um, otherwise known as a major seventh, so a half step really, between these two notes. Here they get closer together, and this is a minor sixth. So as you're writing your brass uh, lines and your voice leading, you'll want to look out for different intervallic relationships like this. And I wanted to see which packages were more forgiving and which packages sounded really dissonant. As an example of something sounding really dissonant, uh, we can check out Hollywood Brass. So Hollywood Brass, I was using the Marcato sustains, and I believe I was laying them, layering them with another sustain. So that, again, just doubling up and doubling up on the, um, you know, the, the number of players per ensemble. So this was pretty, pretty full of players. Not necessarily the best practice, but that's what I was trying to uh, go for here. And so what you'll notice here is that, again, we've got close, close intervals here and here that sound pretty muddy. Sorry, I've got a 
Aflatos demo. <laughs> Checking out somebody's Aflatos for his uh, review. So this again is, we're just soloing the Hollywood. And let me check my mixer real quick to make sure that I am only listening to the, uh, the package itself and no other. Yeah, so we have no, we have a clipper on the uh, very final thing and the, the, the sound card is turned down a couple decibels so that I don't overload uh, YouTube or the streaming service. <laughs> You can hear right here is where it gets kind of dissonant. I mean, it's written this way. But it sounds worse there than it did with, for instance, Ark. And that it did with uh, Junkie XL, for instance. Junkie XL is a little more forgiving there, that chord. It's also much louder. Apologies for not uh, volume and balancing everything. Let's check out a designed Forzo patch. So this is uh, one of the easy to access organic design samples um, kind of patches in Forzo. I think it's called something like Gladiator, something Gladiator. And the reason that I pick this one, I'll open it up here, is because it just has a great kind of synthy brass sound. It's called a gladiator's welcome. And so um, everything, again, um, is mod wheel at full, velocity at full, so that you've got pretty much the same MIDI for most of these. Let's go back to the beginning here. So again, you can hear some mud and dissonance as you get this major seventh and this minor sixth in the writing. But uh, I, I did want to hear how close I could stack some of those intervals. This part was much cleaner, even though this is also, you know, the, the same major seventh, but an octave plus an octave. <laughs> You know that works a little better. Let's uh, let's skip over to Century Brass. So the Century MIDI is the same MIDI, and um, this is an 8DO package. I doubled up a few things once again, meaning uh, so 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 this has I think trumpets and trombones. I don't think there's a tuba in the Century Ensemble, so you get the tuba in the soloists. So you're only hearing the ensemble package here which is mostly trombones, horns, and, and trumpets. Kidding. So um, I think that would work pretty well with a uh, a synth bass, meaning if you if you got some more sub or lower lower end with a, a synthesizer, you could work with that pretty well. Now let's switch to um, the Angry Brass Pro and Caspian. Now these are interesting packages, and out of the box they have. Um, different interesting mic positions kind of selected, meaning, you know, you open them up and they don't necessarily have zero on the mics. So one of them might be negative 
I don't know, 4.2 or negative 5.8 on the mic positions, and their close mics are panned differently. There's a lot of interesting things going on with the uh, Angry Brass Pro and Caspian. So let's take a look. Here's um, Angry Brass Pro, the close mic. Uh, you only get close in Deca. So, and those are actually more consistent. So we've got negative six on all the volumes for the close mics. Well, wait, did I do that myself? Yeah, I did that. So the panning is over to the right a little bit, and it's negative 6.4. And then for four horns, it's uh, the close mic is a negative 11.9. And this is all to balance things out, and it works. It's just, uh, 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 it's just something to be aware of. When you open them up, the default positions have the close mics moved over left and right, and the volume is where in various positions between 6.4 and 12.7 decibels. So let's listen to just Angry Brass Pro. You'll notice the if you compare it to something like a Forzo, um, you know you'll hear a pretty big difference with the the amount of low end here. And quickly, we'll just listen to the, that designed Forzo patch, which has one of the biggest low ends and bass in this whole group compared to Angry Brass Pro. Neither is uh, better or worse. You don't necessarily need all that low end in a sound designed. Well, I guess I, I shouldn't say you don't necessarily need it, but you can you, you can use something else to create that low end without needing Sforzo to do it if you wanted to go with Angry Brass Pro. But again, with the uh, Caspian, we're going to hear some of that we're going to see some of that same mic panning and mic level uh, specificity. So negative 5.8, 4.2, 7.5, different panning in the close mics. So uh, the and and you've got wide mics that are off when you open up Caspian uh, by default. But it also lacks that big boomy subby low end, which isn't a big deal. It's just something to be aware of. Let's listen to them together real quick. You can hear how Angry Brass Pro is sort of one notch more intense than Caspian. Uh, just for fun, I was throwing the BBC Free uh, package in here from Spitfire. I don't have any of Spitfire's uh, paid brass. Well, I probably have some of their labs. But I wanted to make sure that I had something that was totally different kind of thrown in here. And I gave them maybe an unfair test because I was throwing a bunch of notes at a tuba. Um, you know, I threw a bunch of notes at all these different things because I was just sort of trying to get them to sound as big as possible. They don't sound, they sound pretty mellow. So here's, here's the BBC. <laughs> Can hear a, a clear aesthetic difference. They're not trying to 
get as bright and blatty and splatty and there's a word for um you know getting that kind of super um buzzy splatty sound that i forget someone can put it in the comments now speaking of that sound sound iron did um a bit of that in their native instruments uh symphony symphony series and uh, i threw the ensemble patch at this same set of notes no not uh, that one uh, right here so that i could hear what they were doing now this is again the ensemble sustains not their blast fff patch just ensemble sustains meaning uh, as big as it gets, it's not trying to be the triple F. I did increase the motion and reduce the release a little bit. But it's just the ensemble pad. In the mix, it kind of actually starts sounding okay, but it has a lot of, um, you know, mud, people would say, or, or poor voice leading when I introduce the dissonant passage here. This is something you'd probably want to just delete, these four notes. Uh, these beginning notes, it just sounds dark, and then you can hear where the articulation of the horns begin. Um, e either it's an articulation change or it's the horns beginning. I can't remember. I'm not. I don't know if that's actually the sound of a horn, but it might be, um, clearly you could hear a new instrument group joining there. Now let's check out Trailer Brass plus the Horde. For the horde, I needed to uh, remove some notes because they have a limited range. And trailer brass alone, this is from musical sampling. I used the breakout pass, pass, patches, not the uh, adventure or majestic patches, and just use the sustains. You can see that the mod wheel's all the way up, but velocity's all the way up on all these notes so that we could get the splattiest, blatty, blastiest kind of sound. <laughs> Pretty, pretty direct, pretty loud, pretty good sound. You had the horde in, and it's got that big synthy sub sound design sound. This is the B1. You can hear that the top line isn't getting played. It just tops out around, around here, I think. And this is why they tell you not to write those intervals. And I wanted to make sure that I included them so that we could hear muddy writing as well as less muddy. <laughs> um, we haven't hit the Forzo real, quote unquote real, because it I use the sustains are kind of mellowish, and I actually really enjoy Forzo, and I wanted to kind of highlight their better <laughs> features. So I use Forzo's um it's called a Brom patch. It's more like a, like a big blasty, um, not really marcato, not really sforzando. That's probably why they called it a Brom because it doesn't really decrescendo, um, as like a marcato might. But it's short. It doesn't last as long as this passage would. So, this is what uh, Orzo is playing. Well, I suppose I can play the real. In here screen here screen into view 
You can see this is the Brom patch, and if I move it over to sustain, long sustain, it just doesn't have the same oomph. Now Portado had a little bit of gusto. It, it, it kind of decrescendoed or diminuendoed. So you kind of need to pick and choose your your articulation here, but with the designed, if I just do the Brahm with the designed in this uh, natural or realistic kind of acoustic sound plus the design sound. You kind of you're kind of approaching the best of both worlds. Now let's talk about Junky XL, and the reason I left this for last is because I want to go into a little bit more detail about it. This set of instruments is going to be a lot louder than the rest. I should probably just pull the volumes down so we get some volume matching. Pull it down. For whatever reason, it's just ginormously louder than everything else. <laughs> Now I did start playing with different intervals, and that was because I felt like I could. So I put some some closer groupings here, definitely a closer grouping here. I, I was like, that doesn't sound as bad as it could. These These groupings didn't sound as bad as they might, so... As a passing... Gesture, I kind of liked that, and this is this is pretty intense, but it kind of worked. So I felt like it was uh, the experiment of which of these libraries is more quote unquote forgiving. I was like, this is very forgiving, meaning I can write worse parts, better, you know, worse parts, and it sounds better. <laughs> You know, these are also, uh, the other difference here is I was writing legato. So you can see the note overlaps. So the individual instruments, we've got trumpets doing this big ascending line, and all it does is, is rise. Horns, it does two, two ascending staircases. The, um, and these are the sustains plus legato. Trombones uh, go down and then drop and come back up. Again, legato. The chimbasi uh, go down and go down and, and back up a touch. Uba down and down and then. I've got these um, max velocity. The tuba really strains to get here, but I like that there's a library that that pushes this hard <laughs> on the on the sound of the instrument because check this out. I mean, it's intensely pushing on this tuba, and you can hear a little bit of the editing, I think, to achieve what we're hearing. It's it's not exactly... Um, uh, I don't know that the instrument actually played that. I think that might have been edited. If we switch to the close mics, you can... And you, especially if you put on headphones like I've got on, you can start hearing possible, you know, the phasing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So you hear the phasing and the beginning of, you know, it sounds great in a mix, but once you isolate it, you, you, you kind of feel as though this dynamic level is artificial. And I think that's probably true um, in the sense that it's, it's, it's unrealistically demanding of a, of a player probably. But you take it down just a little bit, you get, you get a, the, the realistic uh, tuba when you take the mod wheel down a touch. Or at least they edited it more seamlessly. Similar with the Chimbasi, but even more pronounced. The phasing here is is pretty um let me switch back to the tuba quickly and, and the mixer back to the tree um with the chimbasi the um uh, <laughs> the phasing is very in pretty intense actually and i i threw a bunch of um articulations in here let me select something that this is the articulation we've been working with uh sustains with a legato but listen for the phasing because it's pretty pronounced here. And I'm not saying that this makes the package less valuable, but it is something to be aware of. You can hear a little bit of chorusing effect in there. That's, that's okay with me because it sounds great in the mix. We take out the, oh, I, th I had this happen before. I feel like this is a sign player thing. I change, start changing the mics, they, they stop working. Yeah, I need to kind of jog it. So, uh, Jane's legato, what I'm gonna do is like remove the legato. There we go, now we've got sound again. And if you're hearing what I'm hearing, there's clear phase incoherence and chorusing going on. The kind of thing that you'd want edited out in your samples. I just like the the whole rest of the package so much, but again, if you just bring the mod wheel down a touch and get it back into kind of more of a realistic what the performer might actually do, it's not enough. Am I not editing the right MIDI? Yeah, oh, I know what's happening. Well, um, I know what's happening. I only loaded the triple Fs. I only loaded the triple Fs because I was looking at, um, I, I had, you know, 40 gigs of RAM with everything loaded, 32 on the machine. So I was trying to conserve RAM. Apologies. Now, what does this stuff all sound like in context? Considering that we've walked through the majority of the and anything that we haven't walked through, I can continue, uh, you know, playing with as we as we go. There is nothing but a clipper at the end of my mixing chain. 
So all of these are exactly as they, you know, were out of the box. If I made any minor changes, it was pretty, pretty minor. I'm going to take down Junkie XL. Let's just listen to these Junkie XLs. That's the audio. Not the MIDI. And the Forzo. Kind of just balance volume matching them slightly. Arc sounds pretty great. Aspian and uh, Angry Brass Pro all play together. Sound very bright. Hollywood. Did we hear the Hollywood? Again, the thing with the Hollywood is that they sound really great in this middle range where I wasn't writing for them here, and they got quieter and quieter. And then when they came back here, strong. But right there, they just sound terrible because this interval just doesn't work. They're not forgiving my poor voice leading at all here. It just sounds like a mess. I've got a little bit of the Hamburg um, reverb on there. So that was the Hollywood. We heard these guys. That's pretty loud. Let me just um, take it down a touch. Uh, here. Compare that to the fort so here. Kind of tough to combine them, compare them since they're pretty different. Native Instruments Symphony Series. Century. Talos. Just the low. I wish I had the horns, but I don't. And then, of course, BBC Free kind of as the... What do they call it? Straw Man? I almost want to just turn down the low... Just turn down right here. Let's go with the trumpets, turn them up. If you put some OTT on here, it might be okay. Let's Why not? just throw some OTT on this trumpet here. And throw some OTT on this horn. That's a lot of OTT. And so OTT on the trombone. Barely even hear that. And the bass drum. Like I need to write a different part for it. I needed to make it monophonic instead of polyphonic. Let's 
see here. I think I still can rescue this. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty mellow sounding, even with all those OTs, so relative to the, the other packages, it's not quite going to pop the same way. Now, let's listen to all of these uh, in context. This is not meant to be a final finished, fully mixed, fully mastered trailer, but it is intended to give you some context in what some of these sound like. So let's listen to ARC. Oops. Listen to ARC, unmute it here. So in isolation, you get this. And in context, let's say you had a bunch of strings going and per some percussion and some synthesizers and some bass synths and wire, some noise going. and actually unmuting the rest of them. Oh, in order to do that, I am going to need to get some more dynamics reduction happening on the whole mix, meaning the mix is too loud. I need to get, um, I need to bring down some bus things. I'm also gonna put on a multiband. This is a multiband that is a straightforward three band preset from FabFilter, which I have just adjusted slightly so the, the sub is down or the low end is down about half a decibel and the mid is up about one point one sixth of a decibel. And the and the, and the top is up a, a about a de, about a decibel. So very subtle adjustments to kind of bring it in line with some references. Now maybe you want your brass mixed a little louder. Maybe the choir was dominating or whatever just to get you some, so just to get you um, the brass kind of popping out a little bit more I guess Now I do have a limiter in um, OBS as I'm streaming to YouTube here, and there's obviously a limiter on the the mix itself, and the it's, the whole audio is brought down a bit. I'm not used to trying to stream a, a really loud piece yet, so if this doesn't sound fantastic, I apologize. I'm not trying to tell you what these are going to sound like in your final mix. You're going to tweak them kingdom come. I'm just trying to get the approximate differences clarified about what they might sound like in a mix. From ARC, let's move to Junkie. This is Orchestral Tools um, Junkie XL Brass. Let me bring multi band compressor back up. Oh, yeah. That's what we're listening for. And with the Chimbasi there, that is the kind of phasing um, legato sustains patch. In the Mercado patch, 
I don't think I showed you. That doesn't happen. So let's bring this back real quick. And if you if you really don't like that phasing sustain patch, you can just switch to a Mercado patch like this one. MIDI channels. Oh, no. You can just use a Mercado patch like this. Maybe that's not a fix for you if you want that big brown sound. But you've got other things to choose from, like a sforzando sustain. Which for me, um... You can hear it only sustains on these lower notes. I don't quite understand why that is. When we go down the keyboard here, for instance, you do get it sustained. And I don't hear the phasing. So this is the chimbasi. All the way down to the bottom. And I think that starts around C. This C sharp or D flat, you don't think you get that. Some phasing edits in there, I guess. Let's go back to which dynamic I've loaded. Triple Forte, Legato is Ah. Uh, When I hold the button down on the mouse and press this keyboard, I'm getting a different note than I get when I hit play on the sequencer. I don't understand. So there's, there's going to be options here. I kind of distracted myself from the full uh, context, though. Put this back to sleep. Basically, I'm still in favor of Junkie XL, Forzo, Arc, those are still my top choices. I think you can do a lot of good work with Angry Brass, Pro, and Caspian. I wish I had Cine samples. I apologize. I don't have any of the Cine Brass to work with. Hollywood, you can make work. Um, you, you have to work a little harder. Trailer Brass, with the Horde especially, you've got a lot of um, you know great options. NI Symphony, I'm not sure that you really have what you need. Century, I think you can make it work. You you might need a little bit of oomph, um, but you can you can probably make it work. Talos, clearly, if you have got the whole package with the horns, I think that you've got a lot of a lot to work with. BBC Free is is definitely not going to work for this exercise. All right, let's um let's go back to the audio for Junkie XL in context. Back to all the way to the strings. I mean, it really depends on how you want to mix a lot of this stuff. I'm not trying to mix it super awesomely right now, and you can kind of hear that it's sort of mm, flat. We have just a minor bit of um, processing on the on the chunky XL horns there, but I think the the majority of what we're hearing is this Fab filter. Uh, 
multiband compressor kind of squeezing the mids down. All right, so I've done a lot of talking. Check here, got a couple people viewing, hi people viewing. Um, we're gonna switch um, to Fortso. I would probably mix the brass a little louder. That sample. Let me try that again with just turning the brass up. I'm actually going to turn the choir down. I keep hearing the choir maybe more than I want to. This down a little. That's an arc choir. We'll go back here and turn the brass up just a touch. Clearly you can hear it's just sort of pushing pretty hard mix. I feel like I'm hearing a little bit of the limiting from the OBS just to make sure that I don't absolutely overdrive YouTube here. So apologies if the sound isn't pristine. Let's move on to arc one. I think Arc sounds absolutely spectacular. I just love the sound of brass and Telex, so... Telex? Teldex? <laughs> um, so I think Arc sounds great. Angry Brass Pro and Caspian, again, remember, don't have that low end, but they do have um, a lot of brightness and brilliance and aggression. A couple things are distracting from the brass. I've got a synth that has a little bit of, um, a couple synths that are kind of fuzzy in the low end, and I've got a almost a whistle tone in one of the synths in the top end that's kind of pushing through. These are things that I was hearing in the reference tracks uh, as I was mim mimicking them and, and mocking this up. So uh, again, the mix is something that you'd want to play with. This is Hollywood with those Marcato sustains with the low brass, horns, trumpets, I think I threw in a solo tuba. It's got kind of the kitchen sink thrown at it. You know, I mean, Hollywood still has enough guts to kind of push through. The Horde, I rebalanced the sub on the Horde a little bit so that Trailer Brass should feel fairly well balanced. Let's try this one. I was riding the fader a little bit, and I have been with all of these. I want to point out those whistle tones from one of the synths so that you can hear how it's not the brass making one of those tones. Ne 
Native Instruments um, Symphony series, you know, in the context, it begins to hold its own. It's when you when you try to isolate it and make it sound like brass that it, it kind of starts falling. You, you need to really work with it. Um, the Sound Iron approach to that library, they got really splatty with the, with the edges of it, which I really like in certain contexts, but you have to be really careful because it just pops out. It goes from mellow, like, like tone to um, that tonguing, that um, embouchure style that I can't remember the name of right now that just, just kicks into overdrive. Let's see if I'll show you. So the first two notes won't have it, and the third note or fourth note will. And you can hear that new ensemble group in, of instruments starting, but it's that splatty sound. And again, it's muddy because of the way I wrote it. I wrote it to be dissonant so that I could test how jarring those low notes um, with, with, with a minor sixth and a major seventh would sound. Um, so that's, don't blame the, the software package for not forgiving my bad writing, my, my intentionally poor writing. It doesn't appear here. It's, that's a pretty dissonant interval, but... Begins, it pulls it off better. Um, the point is more that when you push those Native Instruments Symphony Series brass to that extreme and you have that mod wheel all the way up, you're, you're begging, you've got this very fine line between tone and that kind of more bright, brilliant, splatty, brassy sound. Century, sorry, I kind of disrupted the flow there. But, uh, do a little ear cleanse, a little, um, sabi. This is Talos. This is Ark. This is Forza Designed. This is Trailer Brass. This is Caspian and Angry Brass. This is Junkie XL. Unfortunately, not volume balanced. This is Century Brass. Now I'll ride the fader and put that in the mix. I'm riding the bus for this and putting Century Brass in the mix. That penultimate note where that whistle tone pops out. Talos, just the low Talos. I don't have the other horns. I don't have the horns to Talos. I don't have low Talos. This is the sound that's popping out that you shouldn't blame it blame the brass for. It was supposed to be mostly the noise, because I kept hearing this kind of noisy pad sound in all the references that I was just throwing something in there. But unfortunately, it was distracting me from most of those brass patches, so I apologize that that was... Uh, we did turn the choir down. I probably should have turned that down. I put a compressor on it. 
So that is the, the comparison for the most part, just for shits and giggles. We'll listen to all of the brass together. Um, I think I took the... Let's take the uh, Junkie XL down a bit. Sorry. Century is, is one that I really want the volume level because it gets so big right here um, to work with that. I also would want to bring in the solo tuba. Century has an ensemble um, and then a solo series so that you, if you, you can get them as a bundle and you can get the ensembles and the solos. And if you get Century from ADO, I think I should have put the tuba in here to have a more fair comparison. I also just feel like it needs a little bit more compression over here to kind of keep it in line. All right, let's just play them all together. It'll sound like an organ, but whatever. We'll wrap it up and, uh, you know, if there's questions or if there's follow-up videos, I kept trying to record this and I just felt like making the one stream and kind of working through everything would be... Here we go. I gotta start at the beginning. <laughs> There you have it. Every brass library that makes sense to play, including BBC Free, um, playing some fairly okay parts and then some less well written parts, but with more octaves in, thrown in. Some of it legato, some of it ensemble, very few of it solo instruments. Most of it was as many instruments as I could get. If it was A12, I picked A12. Um, Ah, 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 12. Ah, 12. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you um, found some usefulness for this very non-scientific uh, set of rambling around brass uh, as I sort of explore what it might be like to write a trailer. Enjoy. Have a great uh, time. Talk to you soon.